I hope that uh, everyone of you is fine and enjoying his or her Ramadan along with the spicy and tasty samosa and pakoras. Today we are going to talk about a very basic uh, concept in plant resistance. Uh, rather a question uh, which we are going to answer and the question uh, is which is asked to us as a student of plant pathology and the entomology is very simple. That why a pathogen or insect attack a certain plant and why not it attacks other plants uh, present in the field or we can rephrase this question that why a plant is host to a certain pathogen or the insect and why it is not host to all the other pathogens or the insects although it is a very simple question but uh, believe me it is a very difficult to answer and the researchers for many years are trying to get the final answer of it. Although they have not a great success in it, but still they have a very basic idea through their research, which help us to solve this mystery, which is known as non-host resistance. So I would like uh, that everybody should pay attention. So at the end of the lecture, uh, he or she must have a very basic idea about the concept which is non-host resistance in the plant pathology. May I ask you a very simple question that how many times you heard that cotton leaf gall virus also attacks apple, citrus, tomato, chickpea etc. or the fruit fly also attacks cotton plant? Your answer probably never. So why it is always never? What never means? It means that the resistance offered by non-host plant is a durable. Why we call the durable? We know that uh, cotton leaf curl virus for almost more than 100 years. And during in the last 100 year, we never heard that the cotton leaf curl virus start attacking the citrus or the uh, apple. It means at least for the last 100 years, the apple and the citrus or the tomato are the non-host of the cotton leaf curl virus or there is a non-host resistance exists in the tomato or the apple or the citrus against the cotton leaf curl virus. Similarly, we know that the fruit fly attacks many plants. But for the last many decades, we never heard that the fruit fly start attacking the cotton plant. Or in other way, the cotton is the non-host of the fruit fly for the so many years. So it means the non-host resistance is the most durable form of the resistance. And the second thing, it is the most common form of the resistance. Why it is the most common form of resistance? Because every plant exhibit it. Every plant is susceptible against few pathogens, but it is resistant against hundred or even thousands of the pathogen. So if it, it is present in every plant, then it is also the most common form of resistance as well. In the last slide, we talk about that the non-host resistance is the most durable form of resistance and it is the most common form of the resistance. But if you want to have a definition of non-host resistance, it is the resistance which is shown by entire plant species to a specific parasite or a pathogen. Uh, this can be understood if you look at the example. Pseudomonas syringae is a bacterial pathogen which is capable of causing disease in more than 200 plants. It has different pathovars. Uh, actually, it has more than 50 pathovars which attack different kind of plants. For example, Pseudomonas syringae PV tomato caused disease in tomato plant. 
Pseudomonas syringi PV Paisai cause disease in pea plant. Pseudomonas syringi PV Tabasai cause the disease in the tobacco plant. But none of the pathovar is capable of causing disease in the groundnut. Here there are different varieties of groundnut, for example, Bari 89, Chukori, Swad Phali, Bari 2000, Bari 2016, Golden. These are different varieties of groundnut. And none of the Pseudomonas pathovar is capable of causing disease in any variety of the groundnut. So it means this is the resistance which is shown by entire plant species. Here, the groundnut against a specific parasite or a pathogen. Here, the Pseudomonas syringi. Like any country's defense system, the plant defense system also work in the layers. Uh, you always see the rangers at the border, then the infantry, then the armored corps, and the gunners are backing the infantry. But you never see that any country put tanks and guns at the border. Similarly, the plant defense system also occur in the layer. The first layer of the plant defense system is known as non-host resistance. This layer of the defense system filters the maximum number of the pathogens so that only the few pathogens are capable of breaching this layer and this layer is connected to the many more layers which sometimes work together and which sometimes work independently but they are always work in a kind of team so the non-host resistance is the outer layer and then the other layers are subsequently present. As I mentioned earlier that the non-host resistance is the most common form of resistance and every plant exhibits it. But still uh, the phenomena of non-host resistance is not properly understood. The researchers are trying their level best to solve the mysteries of non-host resistance and to try to answer the following questions. The questions are, what are the components of non-host resistance? Second, how similar it is the host resistance and how it is different from the host resistance? And the other is that, does it occur in a one form or it has more than one form or the types? So in the coming slides, uh, we try uh, to answer these questions uh, from the published material so far. Non-host resistance is a form of true resistance and if it is a form of true resistance, it means that it should be under the control of uh, one or more genes. So if it is so, then how we can know that which gene of the plant is actually plays role in the non-host resistance? It is always difficult. Why? Because on the non-host resistance, you can't apply the gene for gene model, which is given by the floor in 1946. And if you remember that uh, gene for gene model tell us that uh, there is uh, a resistant gene in the plant corresponding to the A virulent gene in the pathogen and the vice versa. But such model you can't apply on the non-host resistance. So how we can come to know which gene of the plant plays role in the non-host resistance? It is through the uh, forward or the reverse genetics and uh, where we have the loss or the gain of function mutants and these through these mutants we come to know that what is the role of gene playing in the non-host resistance. Nature is always very kind with the plants and it provided them different kind of layers. And these layers help the plant to remain protected not only against the environment but also the pest. 
so majority of the plants are resistant or non host against the pathogen or the pest because they have these layers but one question is that does these layer formation is under the control of some kind of gene and second if that gene loss its role then the resulting plant can become host of previously non host pathogen so in the next slide we through example try to understand it as i mentioned earlier that our knowledge uh, that gene has any role in the uh, non host resistance comes from the loss of function mutations so there is a pathogen which is known as blumeria graminus formi species triticide this pathogen is capable of causing the disease in wheat plant and the disease is known as powdery mildew in other sense blumeria graminus formi species is a pathogen of wheat or the wheat is the host of the blumeria graminus formi species triticide but on the other hand model plant arabidopsis which belong to family brassicaceae is never attacked by blumeria graminus triticide why because arabidopsis is non host of blumeria graminus formi species triticide but what happen there is a loss of function mutant which is unable to form the actin cytoskeleton so when the blumeria graminus is inoculated on this loss of function mutant it is able to cause the disease it means that the non host status of arabidopsis against blumeria graminus triticide is dependent upon the production of actin cytoskeleton when arabidopsis fail to produce actin cytoskeletal it is unable to defend against the blumeria graminus formi species triticide and its status from the non host change into the host many plants are non host of the pathogens because they produce certain kind of antimicrobial compounds which are known as phytoantispins these phytoantispins are the part and the parcel of the plants and because they are antimicrobial the pathogen will not attack does the production of phytoantispin is under the control of any kind of gene and if that gene is not functioning what will happen can it change the status of the plant from non host to the host so uh, does uh, phytoantispins has the role in non host resistance and this can be understand by this following example under the natural condition gominomyces graminus variety triticide is capable of causing the disease in the wheat plant it also mean that the wheat is the host of this fungal pathogen but unlike to the wheat oat is never infected by this fungal pathogen which means that naturally oat is non host of this pathogen so people later investigated and find out that oat is non host because oat produce the secondary metabolites which are known as saponins and that secondary metabolite produce in the oat is known as avenacin due to this secondary metabolite which is now called phytoantispin the oat remain non host of the gominomyces graminus variety triticide but what happen 
that if there is a loss of function mutant means that the gene which is responsible for the production of amenosin no more remain functional and as a result of that there is a mutant and that mutant of the oat not produce any kind of saponin what will happen that if this mutant is inoculated by the wheat fungal pathogen the oat mutant loss it non host status and disease is produced which also means that the phytoantispins such as saponin has a role in the non host resistance in contrary to the phyto antispins there are the antimicrobial phytochemicals which are produced by the plants in response to the pathogen attack these induced chemicals are known as phytoalexins so what is the difference between the phyto antispin and the phytoalexins phyto antispins and the phytoalexins both are antimicrobial but phyto antispins are produced by the plants whether they are attacked by the pathogen or they are not attacked by the pathogen they are part and parcel of their physiology uh, while phyto allergens are only produced by the plants in reaction to the pathogen attack so we must able to differentiate what are the phyto antispin and what are the phytoalexins the next question is that whether the phytoalexins has any role in the non host resistance and this we can uh, clarify by the coming example so uh, in this example we will like to talk about that whether the phytoalexins has any role in non host resistance or the not <laughs> under the natural condition arabidopsis plant is resistant against alternaria brassicola so in other words arabidopsis is non host of alternaria brassicola but a loss of function mutant which is known as phytoalexin deficient mutant or pad is become susceptible against the alternaria brassicola so it means when this gene that is known as pad is non functional then the plant become susceptible so this gene actually produce the uh, phytoalexin which is known as camalexin and when it's lost its function that it not able to produce the camalexin the result is that the plant arabidopsis which previously non host of the alternaria brassicola it become the host of the alternaria brassicola so it is clearly shows that the phytoalexin has the role in non host resistance uh, defense in the plant is also dependent upon the production of the signaling molecules these signaling molecules play a very crucial and the important role in plant disease defense and uh, their role is uh, discussed uh, in various papers and uh, it their production is dependent upon the which kind of pathogen is going to attack and uh, they also vary the which kind of genes they are going to activate and uh, hopefully we will discuss uh, in detail in the coming lectures today we are going just to talk how these signaling molecules play their role in the non host resistance most important signaling molecule in plant defense is known as salicylic acid uh, what happen uh, when the salicylic acid is either not produced or it is degraded uh, in case of non host resistance uh, here there is an example the arabidopsis plant under the natural condition is the non host of a cowpea rust fungus which is known as euromyces vigni it means that the euromyces vigni never cause the disease in the arabidopsis plant because it is its non host so what will happen 
when the a loss of function mutant of Arabidopsis, which is known as C2. The C2 mutant is unable to produce the salicylic acid. And when the C2 mutant is inoculated uh, with Euromyces vigni, what is happen that uh, the disease is produced. It also means that the non-host uh, uh, phenomena in the Arabidopsis against the Euromyces vigni is actually dependent upon the production of the salicylic acid. Once it is not produced, its status of non-host to be converted into a host. Similarly, there is a gene which is known as Naji gene. Naji gene is a gene when it is transformed inside the Arabidopsis. Uh, what will happen that this gene, because it produces salicylate hydroxylase, uh, and the production of this enzyme degrade the salicylic acid. So again, uh, a, an Arabidopsis plant transformed with Naji gene, if it is inoculated with the Euromyces vigni, again the disease is produced. So in simple, we can say that the non-host status of the Arabidopsis against cow pea rust fungus Euromyces vigni is due to the production of salicylic acid. The Rabidopsis plant is the non-host of two pathogens. One is the fungi which is known as Botrytis cinerea and other is the bacteria which is known as Pseudomonas syringi PV phaseolicola. So Arabidopsis under the natural condition is never infected by Botrytis cinerea as well as Pseudomonas syringi PV phaseolicola. So in other words, Arabidopsis is non-host of these two pathogens. When the people later investigated why the Arabidopsis is non-host against these two pathogens, they find out it is because of the presence of gene which is known as NHO1. This gene actually makes the plant uh, non-host against Botrytis cinerea as well as Pseudomonas syringi PV physiolicola. What will happen if this gene uh, loss its function as and it is known as uh, small NHO1. So when the loss of function mutant is inoculated with the Botrytis cinerea or the Pseudomonas syringi PV physiolicola, the Arabidopsis plant become the host. It means that the non-host status of the Arabidopsis against these two pathogens is actually dependent upon the gene which is known as HNHO1. But interestingly, the same mutant which is unable uh, uh, to resist against Botrytis cinerea and Pseudomonas not compromise its non-host status against other non-host pathogens such as uh, Alternaria brassicola, Personospora trifolium or Xanthomonas oryzae PV oryzae. What it means? Uh, what is your answer? Think about it. It means that the non-host resistance is not dependent upon a single gene. Rather, it is uh, more than one gene involved in non-host resistance. One gene, NHO, NHO1, is providing uh, its protection against Botrytis cinerea and Pseudomonas syringi, but definitely there are other genes which providing or making the Arabidopsis a non-host against the other kind of pathogens. So that is one of the reason why the non-host resistance is more durable because it is not under the control of a single gene as we see in case of host resistance. The other very interesting finding of this study is that when the Arabidopsis plant is under the attack of a host pathogen which is known as Pseudomonas syringi PV tomato DC3000. This pathogen uh, caused disease in the Arabidopsis plant or we can say the Arabidopsis is the host of Pseudomonas syringi PV tomato DC3000. But when this plant attack 
on the arabidopsis plant what will happen this gene nho1 expression is suppressed it means that uh, this pathogen also feel uh, that it cannot uh, carry uh, more disease if this uh, gene is expressing so from that the scientist uh, concluded that that the non host resistant gene not only provided resistance against the uh, non host pathogens but also have some role against the host resistance and that is the reason why the host pathogen such as pseudomonas syringae try to suppress them from so far discussion one thing is very much clear that the components of the non host resistance may be of physical nature like actin or maybe they are biochemical in nature which is produced before the infection actually took place like the phytoantispin or which is produced after the infection or the pathogen attack like the phytoalexin or the signaling molecule such as salicylic acid so it means the compo when we say about the components of the non host resistance it is not based on a single component but rather more than one component before moving to the next part of our discussion i would like uh, that we have some basic idea about the terms which we are going to come across in the future. The first term is known as PAM. PAM stands for Pathogen Associated Molecular Patterns. These are the essential or the indispensable parts of the pathogen like flagella in case of bacteria and chitin in case of fungi. When we say indispensable, it means that without which they can't survive imagine the imagine the bacterial cells which lost the flagella and if they don't have the flagella it means they can't reach to their host and as a result of that they starve and die same is the situation in case of chitin if the fungal uh, spores or the mycelium lost the chitin it means the cell wall uh, is lost and without the cell wall there will be no chance that the fungi can survive so uh, uh, pathogens can't live without the pams what happen in the nature the plants are provided the special kind of receptors and these receptors are present at the cell membrane of the plants and these receptors has the have the ability to detect the PAMs or uh, that is why they are known as pattern recognition receptor because they are able to detect the PAMs so they help the plant to activate is its resistance system and as a result of that the plant become immune as this immunity is due to the detection of the PAMs that is why this immunity is known as PAM trigger immunity and it is also known as PTI. Most of the non-host resistance is actually uh, under this phenomena which is known as PAM trigger immunity or the PTI. Although the uh, PTI is the first line of defense and most of the pathogens are detected at the cell membrane but uh, the pathogens also have the mechanism to dodge the receptors present at the cell membrane and uh, this uh, help them to put effectors directly inside the host cell where they are able to cause the disease in very early part of our course i told you the effector proteins are those proteins which are capable of causing the disease but uh, inside the host cell there are some resistant proteins are present these resistant proteins have the ability to detect the effectors and uh, due to this ability the plant become resistant as this immunity is due to the detection of the effectors 
that is why this immunity is known as effector trigger immunity the host resistance is due to the effector trigger immunity or the eti and the non host resistance is due to the uh, pam trigger immunity or we can call it eti now we can move to the next part of our discussion and that is the types of non host resistant non host resistance has two types one is known as type 1 which is without the hr and the other is type 2 with the hr and uh, i guess that everybody has no idea what is the hr hr stands for hypersensitive response and it is the suicidal response shown by the resistant host cell when it is invaded by the a virulent pathogen and as a result of that not only cell die but the pathogen inside also die and the rest of the plant remain protected against the uh, pathogen hr always uh, produce uh, symptoms which is usually a necrotic area where the infection or the invasion of the pathogen take place it is very interesting uh, that a single plant can show two type of non host resistance against two different pathogens for example for example nicotiana benthamiana exhibit type 1 non host resistance against xanthomonas compestris pv compestris it means without hr but if the same plant is attacked by other non host pathogen such as pseudomonas syringi pv tomato it show type 2 uh, uh, non host resistance mean with the hr so a single plant showing both kind of non host resistance depending upon which kind of pathogen attacking on it on the other side there is a pathogen which is known as pseudomonas syringi pv fasciolli cola uh, this pathogen triggers non host resistance type 1 in arabidopsis mean without hr but if the same pathogen attack the tobacco then it uh, activate type 2 non host resistance with the hr so there is a variation that a single pathogen can induce a type 1 as well as type 2 uh, non host resistance depending upon the plant it is going to attack here is the model which will help us to understand the type 1 non host resistance and type 2 non host resistance but before uh, going uh, uh, in detail we must uh, have the idea how this model works this green area represent the plant cell and this plant cell has the cell wall and the cell membrane and inside the plant cell there are the surveillance or the resistant proteins are also present and uh, on the top of the plant cell uh, this blue color oval shape represent the fungi but if you look at that it is written nb it means that it is a non host pathogenic fungi for whom this plant is not the host similarly this brown area is also written np this represent the phytopathogenic bacteria but for this bacteria this plant is not the host so first we are going to discuss the type 1 non host resistance what is happen when the non host plant is attacked by the non uh, host pathogenic fungi or the bacteria most of these fungi and the bacteria not enter inside the host cell because the presence of structures such as wax layer or cell wall or the hairs present on the surface of the plant so the they these fungi and these bacteria are mostly uh, filter at the cell wall uh, this is the first obstacle uh, which they can't pass even they can pass the first obstacle they they are detected by the uh, pattern recognition receptors present at the cell membrane and why they are detected because the presence of pams 
we already know that uh, in case of fungi the pam is the chitin and in case of the bacteria the pam is the flagellum so uh, they are detected at the cell membrane and as a result of that a signal molecule is produced and it will activate the antimicrobial proteins which are known as pr uh, proteins or uh, which are produced by the pr genes pr stand for pathogenesis related protein and as a result of that this plant cell or the plant become non host for this fungus or the bacterium if you notice that here the neither the fungi nor the bacteria able to enter inside the host cell so they never enter inside the host cell so these surveillance proteins remain inactive and uh, there is no production of hr or the hypersensitive response the plant become resistant without the production of any kind of hypersensitive response but the story is little bit different when we comes to type 2 in case of the type 2 the pathogen whether it is the fungi or whether it is the bacterium dodge the uh, first two obstacles uh, means that they are not filter at the plant surfaces and they also bypass the receptors present at the cell membrane in case of uh, bacterium they bypass because of the production of syringe like structure which is known as type 3 secretion system and with this system their effector proteins means the bacterial effector protein directly enter inside the host cell while in case of fungi they produce the structure which is known as penetration pack and this uh, structure help the fungi to enter their effector protein directly inside the host cell but still uh, the surveillance proteins which remain inactive in case of type 1 here the surveillance protein become active and they detect the effector proteins both in case of bacteria as well as in case of the fungi and as a result of that the uh, the immunity is activated in the plant cell but because the effector proteins are detected inside the host cell this cell die and uh, we call this response a hypersensitive response so hypersensitive response only produce in case of type 2 non host resistance and not in case of type 1 uh, non host resistance the and also there is activation of pr genes and sar also take place the that is why some people think that the type 2 non host resistance is very near to the host resistance because in case of host resistance there is also the production of hypersensitive response this is the brief comparison between the type 1 non host resistance and type 2 non host resistance in case of type 1 non host resistance it is always symptomless uh, mean because there is no hr so no necrotic area is formed while in case of type 2 the hr take place and as a result of that necrotic area is produced which can be uh, detectable type 1 non host resistance is the most common form of non host resistance but it is usually goes unnoticed and why it is goes unnoticed because it don't produce any kind of uh, hr while type 2 uh, is less common but it is always noticed because it produces the hr where we can see the symptom in the form of brown necrotic spot type 1 uh, non host resistance is based on the recognition or the detection of the elicitors or uh, that we can call them pams 
and it is detected by the uh, pattern recognition receptor present at the cell uh, membrane. While the type 2 non-host resistance is based on the specific recognition of the effectors proteins by the surveillance protein of the plant which is present inside the host cell. The fourth is that uh, the type 1 non-host resistance is very much different from the no host resistance. While type 2 non-host resistance is quite similar to the host resistance because both in type 2 as well as in the host resistance HR is produced. There is always uh, a question for the plant pathologist from where this non-host resistance is originated. If you recall during the boom bar cycle talk, I have told you that the host and the pathogens co-evolve with each other. At some point of time, the host acquired the resistant gene and in response to that, the pathogen tried to acquire the virulent gene. So this cycle is going on and on. Uh, every time when the host become resistant, the pathogen come with the new virulent gene. But the non-host resistance is little bit different from this concept of co-evolution. There is another question which is uh, asked uh, by the plant pathologist is about the origin of the non-host resistance. We already discussed that the host resistance is under the phenomena of co-evolution means host and the pathogen co-evolve together. So while the non-host resistance is under the phenomena which is known as one-sided evolution. So under, to understand what how this one-sided evolution make the plant non-host, we must have the understand the term which is known as specialized pathogen. For example, there is a pathogen which is specialized to attack the citrus plant. So over the period of time, this pathogen developed the structures, physical structures, or it has certain chemicals which not only help this pathogen to reach the citrus plant, but also to attach with the citrus plant and enter into the citrus plant and then to damage into the citrus plant and cause the disease. So there, these structures or these chemicals are specialized for that. And similarly, pathogen is also uh, liking for the nutrients which is produced by the citrus plant. If by chance this plant is inoculated or thrown on the tomato plant, so it will never cause the disease in the tomato plant despite it is a pathogen. Why? Because it is specialized for the citrus, not for the tomato. Similarly, in case of one-sided evolution, which, is take, which has taken place in the plant maybe centuries ago, the plant evolved certain structures or the certain chemicals for that the pathogen has no specialization. So because the pathogen has no specialization for that plant, it will never attack that plant and that plant become non-host for that pathogen. So one-sided evolution make the plants non-host of the pathogen. Similarly, uh, if uh, the plant is evolved in a different geographical area, for example, a plant is evolved in or originated in Australia and there is a fungi which is evolved in Pakistan. So this fungi not involved with the pathogen. So what will happen? It, this fungi which is present in Pakistan will have never have the specialized structure to attack the plant which is originated in Australia. So it means that that kind of evolution is the divergent evolution. So in future, if this plant from move from Australia into Pakistan or imported from Australia to Pakistan, the fungi which is evolved in Pakistan will never cause disease in this plant. So uh, divergent evolution is one of the reason why the plants are non-host of the pathogen. However, uh, those uh, pathogens which uh, where uh, the phenomena of evolution is rapid, 
means that which produce large number of spores billions of spores like in case of rust fungi and which can complete more than uh, one uh, disease cycle in growing season then their chances uh, to attack more plant are uh, are more as compared to a pathogen which produce less number of uh, inoculum and which can only produce a uh, grow uh, a complete life, single life cycle in one growing season so that is one of the reason that the rust fungi caused by paxinia genus has a has the ability to attack 365 plants belonging to 54 different genera why because the process in this uh, pathogen uh, is more and it evolved more rapidly as compared to other pathogens so at this point i hope that everyone has uh, get the answer about the basics of non host resistance that why the plants are non host to certain pathogen uh, what are the components of the non host resistance what are the types of non host resistance and how this non host resistance is similar to the host resistance and from where this non host resistance is originated there is no doubt uh, that the much of the work uh, is done in the host resistance as compared to the non host resistance and uh, probably uh, one of the reason is that uh, working on the host resistance is much easier as compared to the non host resistance because the host resistance is under the concept which is known as gene for gene so we have much better knowledge about the host resistance as compared to the non-host resistance but if you look at the durability the non-host resistance is more durable and it is much more common as compared to the host resistance but the issue is that uh, we still not uh, know very much about the non-host resistance but the people are doing efforts and new papers are published about the non host resistance and there are also effort going to incorporate non host resistant gene into the plant so that the plants become the non host of the known pathogen